Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live virtual session. I am Astha from People Matters, and I'll be your host and moderator for today. I formally welcome you to today's webcast on EX engagement and everything that matters. Best strategies to unlock workforce productivity and success. This webcast is brought to you by People Matters in association with Tartan, powered by Batik. Now, employees of today expect so much out of their jobs and their employers. They want their sense of purpose to align with the values of the company. They want their managers to aid their professional development. These are things that cannot be bought by simply increasing the employee's take-home pay. It requires a paradigm shift in how employers and organizations view employee engagement and EX. And this shift is, focus is forcing companies to truly value their employees by actively working on bettering company culture and looking at practical, efficient ways to enhance employee engagement and experience. Now, before we, uh, we begin, a little bit about our partner, Batik. Batik is on a mission to help employees offer every conceivable perk and benefit to their employees. It's a streamlined and simplified platform that reduces the workload of every HR team. Now, without further ado, let me welcome our experts. Uh, today, we have with us uh, Vidya Sagar Ganami, Ganamani, I'm sorry for that, uh, the chairman and MD of Edico. Uh, Vidya Sagar comes with over three decades of international leadership experience with a track record of leading global businesses and HR organizations while driving cultural, organizational, and business transformations. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Asta. Uh, next, we have with us Vicky Jain, who is the founder and CEO of Unova. Uh, Vicky Jain is one of the founders uh, of Unova, which is a cloud-based HRM software that is the brainchild of Convergence IT Services. He's played an active role in the development of the software, which provides a 360-degree solution for HR automation and people management. Welcome, Vicky. We're, we're happy to have Thank you. you. Thank you, Asim. Uh, next, we have, of course, uh, Pramil Jain, who is the co-founder and CEO of Tartan. Tartan, as we know, is built with this mission, uh, with a huge mission with a social purpose to help millions of people that are also in the workforce in India and globally become financially healthier and have a happier work life. Tartan has built Batik for Employers, which is an Amazon for employee, of, uh, employee benefits, offering a series of financial and well-being benefits. It's a one-stop solution with highly curated categories like credit earned, wage, emergency funds, wealth and insurance. Uh, before Tartan, Pramil was a risk management and analytics professional at marquee names like HSBC Bank, HDFC and Citibank. We are so glad to have you with us, Pramil. I think Pramil, you're on mute. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Thank you, Asta, uh, and welcome, Vidya Sagar and Vicky. Uh, good to have you as well. Thanks. I'm sure this will be a very insightful discussion. So uh, let's get. Okay, Shivangi has also joined us. Uh, welcome, Shivangi. Uh, Shivangi is the CEO and director of Skillify. She has worked with brands such as British Council, Times Group, Macmillan, Cambridge, An Academy, Jindal Stainless Steels and many other private universities and corporates. Thank you so much, Shivangi, for joining us. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right, now let's get to it. Uh, as we know, our webcast, uh, the topic of our webcast today is EX engagement and everything that matters, the best strategies to unlock workforce productivity and success. So I'll start a discussion with you, Prame, and then we can go around everyone. Uh, my first question is, you know, over the course of the many disruptions that have happened in the last few years, how do you think workforce and employee productivity has been affected? Uh, thanks, Asa. So, you know, in the last few years, I think a lot has happened, right? Um, over a period of time, like in two to three years since COVID hit, before COVID and post-COVID uh, and, and the re-COVID, which is I think we are seeing now. Is, is something that has impacted uh, multiple ways, right? The first itself is the remote work adoption, an adoption, and maybe a hybrid culture which is coming into picture. That's one big thing. And it's not just happened in one geography, probably the entire globe, right? Where uh, people were asked to work from home, save time, uh, sitting at home, and then a lot of them pushed that, hey, come back to office, not just 
smaller ones but the larger one as well right the second thing that is uh, you know come across is the digital transformation the nature of communication uh, and the work that is happening right so a lot of and thanks to again the remote working that came in between where the entire communication and the work became digital um, in, in nature i would say where the meetings completely transformed from physical meetings to digital meetings uh, the, 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 the i think the collaboration effort etc that goes you know across teams that has changed drastically and and it has become more and more data driven uh, improved communication the multiple things have changed uh, you know from the disruption point of view how the work has changed uh also with this there is also the per human angle of every um you know workforce uh, you know employees as well as the employer that has come into play where people have realized that hey there is a mental health there is a well being that needs to be taken care uh so that has also evolved quite a lot we have seen so many so much work happening from the startups and across organizations where things are improving uh another big thing is on the upskilling and reskilling of of the the i think the workforce right where the new technologies are being picked up new tools are being used across people have to learn and learn stick to it even if they like it don't like it etc so overall it has also brought in the agility and adaptability um you know, across both organizations and workforce and that's where the engagement of employees the workforce has become a paramount interest for every company and uh, to make sure that the people are motivated connected and committed because there have been many instances where people do get lost so uh, the quite a lot of things have happened i think uh, but but yeah these are the core things that i believe that 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 has you know taken um, you know everybody to take a, a, you know act upon basically yeah i'd like to take this question to uh, 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 with this, uh, yeah. How do you think? Thank you. The productivity of the workforce. Yeah. So thanks, uh, thanks, Asta, and Brad. So to build on what Pranay said, right? So there have been new ways of working that have come upon us. Like I think many people have said that uh, COVID has proven to be actually the chief digital officer for most companies. It really radically forced a shift in the ways of working that uh, that was not uh, envisioned before. now if you just think about um, the productivity and what could or could not impact productivity right so there are a few things i always say that you know why do people come to work and what do you do what do you achieve at the workplace there are a couple of things for young professionals who are just starting up their career i think that they seek coaching and they seek mentoring from people who have been there and get and are able to provide that coaching and mentoring for the more senior uh, people uh, in an organization collaboration is key yeah because you need to actually think and work together to solve complex problems and i think what has proven to be um, reality is that the lack of coming together on a frequent basis has actually diluted these two uh, these two things the ability for leaders and uh, subject matter experts in organizations to provide coaching and mentoring and on the other hand for people to come together and collaborate and solving uh, complex problems in a in an efficient way i think those are two things that which i i would say have been the causes and probably the reason for a dip in productivity of employees over the course of the last couple of years and i think uh, different companies value these things differently and you also begin to see that it it's a bit of a cycle right so everybody was very happy to have work from home there was time efficiencies there were things around uh, employee satisfaction etc but on the flip side missing on these points also proved to be detrimental to organizations and that's where i think many companies are striving to seek a better balance now between the convenience and the efficiencies of remote working versus the the collaboration coaching and mentoring that you can actually offer employees when they come back to the offices so i think that's that's where things lie at the moment as that that's my that's my opinion about this one very interesting how you talked about the dilution of things uh that have happened 
because of covid essentially uh, vicky what has been your uh, uh, personal uh, experience with the disruptions and the effect on workforce productivity so uh, i i would you know uh, second my thoughts with uh, vidya sagar and you know uh, pramay uh, first of all let me you know we we talking about two things employee productivity and the disruption let let us first just define productivity what exactly is productivity in simple equation it is output upon input you know uh, how much you can create with the you know uh, with how much you have consumed right so uh, we have seen a lot of disruptions uh, in, in entire human evolution also if you see there has been uh, the first disruption that happened was agricultural revolution then it was the industrial revolution then the digitization age then the ai age so uh, all of these disruptions honestly speaking have actually you know helped us increase the output and reduce the input and obviously which which kind of you know uh, improves overall productivity of human effort that is that is going uh, but one one thing one disruption that we have recently seen which which is covid and what uh, you know vidya sagar also kind of mentioned is it is probably it has actually had a dual effect on productivity whereas uh, there has been a lot of things like work from home the comfort the you know reduced in reduction in travel time which has actually helped us uh, increase the uh, numerator which is output but uh, the input has also gone up so it is actually probably you know i i, I would say it is uh, in some cases obviously you know helped improve the productivity but uh, it has uh, other side of the coin as well which is kind of reducing our, our overall productivity because of uh, less engagement because of you know the, the, uh, i i personally believe a hybrid is a great thing but the the, the major challenge is uh, the depleting trust Uh, the depleting engagement uh, and you know uh, the loyalty of uh, of people working with organizations which is kind of uh, uh, you know reducing the overall productivity so these are my takes on you know uh, the overall last disruptions and how it has impacted productivity i love how vicky has provided not just a historical uh, historical perspective on the disruptions but also a mathematical uh, perspective on it as well which obviously makes uh, perfect sense it is your that is how we can define efficiency and productivity uh, shivangi what are your thoughts uh, regarding all the changes in the world of work the disruptions the lack of productivity and engagement i think uh... post covid things have changed during covid things were different and ever since everything started i think we all have been just being very adaptable and agile towards things that are coming up and down in and around so if you talk about uh, the corporate world and my experience i think uh, while we were you know during that covid stage uh, that covid period we got to understand the art of uh, working virtually so that was the worst scenario that anybody could have ever imagined i would not say that productivity wasn't there big companies great startups have been formed during that time and they are they are doing pretty well uh, and again i come from rackspace technology so we are like a virtual company you know we are virtual employees to each other we hardly have been to uh, offices uh so productivity is all about a great leadership i would feel i mean if you talk to me i would think that i would say that uh, productivity is just equal to how how beautifully you manage a team how you nurture them how you involve them how you engage them and most importantly what has been your way of communication with them during this time there has been like great disruptions in terms of you know communication which is why productivity has gone down and that's when uh, you know once things have started getting better there's a lot of trainings that are happening specifically for managers and leadership so i think uh, everything is taking its beautiful curves time and again and all people are trying to do is getting agile with things so that's the beautiful curve that you get to see secondly if you talk about now uh, i know it is difficult uh, to be in a hybrid model from company's point of view i absolutely un understand in second that even and sometimes it becomes very difficult to reach out to them right uh but at the same time if if you look at uh, you know the employee benefit hybrid model has come out to be one very good uh, ways of attracting talent now nobody wants to really come back to work like for five days in a week and looking at the kind of uh, you know traffic and this and that and other things that are there people feel that the you know the salary that's coming in hand is like good one 
so there are there are a lot of pros and cons but coming back to productivity i don't feel that there is any such disruption that would happen if you have great leadership whether it is virtual or it is in person things would always always remain the same and that's where uh, you know we at skillify come into picture and we kind of help corporates level up their soft skills and behavioral skills so my take would be a little different uh, but but i definitely you know buy in the points that everybody has uh, got here so yeah that that is amazing just uh, just to actually um, uh, put a slightly different perspective about it right so we all we all think about of course the the nice creamy layer on top of the society yeah i i, I always challenge ourselves to say what would happen if your farmer decides to stay at home what would happen if your swiggy delivery guy decides to stay at home or work from home so i think i think the, i i always try to see the balance right i think there are um, there are the lucky few i i would call it who would, who can think, manage to actually are you, are you have these benefits something to me no 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 i'm just making a comment to uh, the general thing i think we always need to put these things in the perspective of overall society and i always say that um while we have the lucky few who can have the advantage of taking working from home hybrid policies etc all of us fully rely on a whole group of people who are out there every day doing things which actually enable us to do these things so i always say try to keep that balance in mind as we go through our own lives i think that's something that we should keep at the back of our mind very well said yeah. yeah very well said that's an important perspective and i also like shivangi's perspective about communication and productivity being interlinked that it is it does come down to how well the managers are you know communicating their expectations uh, to their employees so that was another great point uh, thank you everyone for uh, uh, we i think we've set the context very well so we'll move on to the next question um another thing that has changed is the expectation of employees uh employees expect different things the modern employee is very different from the traditional employee so as to speak so what would you say are the expectations of the modern employee that you faced and how do you think that they've changed what is the sort of you know curve you've seen over the years uh, in your experience uh, let's start with vidya sagar and then we can go around again <laughs> yeah so i think there's a a, a beautiful uh, dan pink video which talks about three things right autonomy mastery and purpose i always say those are the three things which define a lot about what people aspire for as they go about their lives it doesn't matter if it's work or if it is life etc so to me for this specific question i think purpose becomes a very important one is the is the purpose of the organization aligned with the purpose of each individual employee i think when that purpose is aligned everything else will take a second place because i think there will be a huge amount of desire in that employee to be the best he or she can or to learn that skill that is required to deliver on that purpose or to operate in an autonomous way and be given the freedom but also not deplete the trust as uh, wiki was talking about because once your purpose is aligned you will do everything that you can to actually make it successful and i think that's something that i always um, believe fully and fundamentally in is how do you allow employees to feel connected to the purpose of the company and if they, of course if they are disconnected they, they will also realize it's a big disconnect and probably they'll find somewhere else where they can find that purpose provide them the mas- the opportunity to master the skills that they truly like to master and finally give them the autonomy to operate in that organization i think that's always the balance i try to seek yeah the balance is uh, important in in so many aspects of our work life uh, uh wiki how do you think the uh, expectations of employees have changed so uh, at our organization also we we mostly have millennials you know uh, i have got opportunity to work with uh, you know uh, senior people as well and what i have understood you know uh, in early you know uh, while you know if, if i say 20 years earlier or 20 25 years earlier the major expectation for any employee with respect to a job was majorly three things compensation designation the job security 
uh, i would say compensation was probably 50% uh, designation maybe 30% and job uh, job security 20% or so but these days millennials we we, we uh, you know average age of my company is also around you know 20 to 23 years and i have observed that these are probably secondary actually speaking you know uh, what what uh, what are the expectation of these uh, new folks is majorly around uh, i would say uh, you know uh, they are expecting a better work culture which you know with this agarji also said you know uh, uh, aligning with the purpose and uh, uh, getting into the right environment the right culture to make uh, create more value that is something motivates uh, people a lot uh, growth opportunities uh, recognition uh, you know challenges you know this is something very very interesting these days people are actually you know uh, working not just for money but to solve uh, uh, more and more challenges i personally have observed money Uh, you know uh, a better motivator than money is give them the actual channel challenges real life challenges which could which they could use their skill to solve and this is what uh, everyone you know uh, out there is expecting you know uh, or rather i would term it as modern day employees are expecting these you know additional stuff which which are now primary compensation designation job security is probably getting secondary a very interesting viewpoint because the average age of employees across have changed we have millennials and gen z and what not entering the workforce it's really changed uh, how the standard workforce looks uh, looks and thinks as well uh, shivangi what do you think about the changes in the uh, employee expectation i think i have again dealt with uh, very senior uh, you know and tenured resources and if you talk about today's uh, environment it's all about being very gen z and fancy so as you rightly said work culture it shouldn't just be a good work culture it has to be a very attractive one very fancy one which can lure the hearts and souls of our uh, youth and i always give this example not just being a content creator but otherwise also uh, with age and with the time that is you know that is uh, probably advancing the attention span is going really less people want quick results people want uh, you know quick things to attract them and that's where everything everything around us is changing getting fancier you just talk about the way companies are marketing themselves the way recruiters are being trained to ensure that they are able to get the right talent in house so for me it's about giving that work culture where it's not just about growing the company it's about showcasing them that once the company grows you guys have your own personal trajectory you know the career trajectory is mapped and uh, not just this there's again a very uh, there's there's a kind of an ambiguity now you'd see in employees they join they join certain companies and then you would see that attrition probably is really high sustaining this man for this you know this workforce is really really tough so you have to keep on giving them something that is attracting them that is taking things uh, you know giving things every time a new turn to retain this talent so for me that has been a new thing and as rightly said by vidya sagar ji aligning them with the purpose the vision and mission of your company is very very important so that's that's very important and if they are aligned if they are uh, if they are the ones who have been given the right uh, you know paths to set the culture for the company so now everybody wants to become a leader and they need to feel that leadership no matter whether they are designated or not and uh, second i'll go back to a point designations now have a they, they play a really big role we don't have those uh, you know traditional designations for people they don't want executive associate and they just don't want to get through that ladder of 10 years to become a manager now things have changed so fast that they want to quickly become a manager they want to have a team they want to have that leadership spirit so as far as my experience has been concerned i think it's a very positive change in the corporate world now when everybody feels one you see a lot of things happening and then it is the company and the people you know the foundation that we lay that is very very important if that is done right you have all the leaders coming up so it has got its own pros and cons but you have to you have to deal with it very smartly if not done smartly people like us would probably you know learn from the company and would open our company which is not a bad idea though but then that's how things are happening a uh, very interesting uh, viewpoint on things shivangi uh, really and uh, now prame what is what is your viewpoint when it comes to the change in the uh, modern employees expectations right so yeah i was actually coming back to the question that 
I think from the perspective of people, right, uh, when they're working, what are their expectations, right? So one big role um, I see is, I think, uh, the demographic itself have changed, right? When I say demographics, it's no more the same uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad cities, I think, where people work, right? So it is, I think the good part is the demographics have changed. There are smaller cities where people work now. Uh, they they have different ways of engaging with people. They see different things, right? People working in cafes uh, from top MNCs as well as the startups, right? So the expectations have changed. And the purpose is no more just the organization purpose or the people they work with. In fact, they have their own life goals that have come into play, that they, they really want to be cool. They really want to be happy. They have family, friends, uh, other people, nearby people to take care of. So there are multiple things that, that have come up, right? So the purpose uh, is not just the organization purpose, but their own why uh, purpose has also come into picture, right? So, uh, so that has become very important. And a lot of organizations, the people managers need to take care of those why purposes. Um, and, and, if, and, and probably that's also the contributing factor of the high attrition, which Shivangini just mentioned about, right? The second key thing, what uh, the purpose basically has definition has evolved basically is what I'm trying to say at the crux. The second thing that Vidya Sagarji said was about autonomy, right? And now when it, when it comes to autonomy, just not that individual wants to have its own ownership about the work. They really want to make sure that whatever they do, um, they have complete control. Their work is getting recognized. Uh, they are they are really making an impact somewhere because there are a lot of job roles. Uh, the impact is is different, right? Uh, where you might not see um, as as one example came about the Swiggy delivery boys, right? That impact versus maybe somebody within the same organization of Swiggy doing the coding, building the app, or updating the app, or maybe doing the partnerships. The purpose and those kind of things are very, very different. The autonomy is very different. It is expectations are different, but making sure they still follow the procedures, the norms and the goals of the company. I think that is that is also the expectations. I think they, across the board, I think they want autonomy, freedom, etc. And and finally, I think the transparency uh, is, is, I would say, uh, has it has also changed right because people really don't want um, when it comes to transparency they don't want micromanagement etc right they really want a free culture uh, work should be done rather than anything else right so uh, sitting on top of their heads and then pushing policies etc that's that's very difficult when it comes to the new age ones so obviously the demographics play a big role that what kind of organization that you are running then also the, what kind of workforce you have. You have a Gen Z, tech, tech, techies, or a delivery worker, or a traditional organizations like banks, etc. So I think it really depends on the kind of organization people uh, that they are. And expectations are have to be managed accordingly. So people have to adapt. And that's when I think we have also seen the HRs and, and the very organizations uh, pretty across the board. I think they have different expectations. And that's where they also um, feel that, hey, they're too stretched because within an organization, you will see variety of workforce. So I think managing those expectations also is tricky. So finding a level field across the organization is, is also a tricky piece, which is where the expectations also change that, hey, for some people, it's very good. For some people, it may not be cool. So you'll have to accordingly adapt. So I think those expectations, um, have to be super flexible, um, you know, super flexibly managed by the organizations, and 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 that's what it is. But yeah, historically, uh, as as Vicky mentioned, the compensation, the designations, they are important. But eventually, uh, I think their own purpose, their own life, um, their life around them has also become equally important. Uh, something that an employer has to note about it. Otherwise, the attrition, low productivity. Uh, will uh, will will be not far away from those organizations. Yeah. Uh, very well said, Vicky. I'll actually, uh, my next question is based off of uh, what you just said about managing these expectations of the employee. So 
how do you think that you know the hr function of organizations can better cater to these needs now that we've defined how the needs have changed how can the hr uh, functions of organizations proactively uh, cater to these needs uh, well, I, i'll take that up uh, so yeah. we, we we spoke about the issues right uh, uh, like you know or other expectations millennials now expect a better work culture less bureaucracy uh, you know uh, challenges recognition etc et so for hr also it's it's very simple right you know uh, do what what would maximize uh, these uh, you know parameters i would say uh hr functions you know uh, can probably obviously they, they need to be more transparent uh, zero micromanagement like you know pramay also said that is something people do not actually you know uh, like even even the uh, the the, the uh, smallest of the employees would probably not want to have uh, much of micromanagement uh, and uh, less less of bureaucracy uh, create more challenges yeah that is something you know uh, which is very interesting uh, uh, task to do you know Uh, for hr folks or for managers as well okay how do you create more challenges and uh, let the same set of employees uh, you know put in their brains like like at our organization we we do hackathons we do collaborative learning wherein we actually tell them about uh, uh, the, the we have a product road map and there are certain features which are which are you know uh, which are probably not created yet by anyone or something which is very new so these are all you know thrown open to to even the interns to give their thoughts and and uh, believe me we have actually built some of the great features uh, you know during these uh, kind of sessions uh, or at least we have started you know uh, with an idea of building that feature so this is something uh, which hr folks could do uh, of course use uh, technology to the fullest uh, there are uh, you know these days uh, hybrid obviously is 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 in it is the way forward but to manage the other challenges which hybrid has Uh, with respect to engagement etc you could use tools like intranet like you know uh, having uh, more of uh, collaborative learning on online learning uh, uh, take virtual hackathons etc so these are something you know uh, 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 organizations can or rather hr functions can you know uh, do to make this uh, uh, address these needs of modern employees and create more internal brand value uh, this is very important these days it's it's no more just about creating a brand uh, uh, by putting an ad on you know uh, on the tv and uh, uh, building the brand for the customer it is also equally important to build the internal brand for the employees also so that because they are the you know ultimate drivers uh, for the organization's growth a very insightful point about creating the internal brand value uh, along with the overall brand value there vicky thank you so much uh, vidya sagar ji what do you have to say about uh, you know how hr can respond effectively to uh, these changing expectations of employees yeah i mean any hr organization has two roles right it has one role towards the the leaders and the managers in an organization and it has a role towards the the employees but also the candidates that they are interviewing to bring into the organization so let me start with the first thing i think um with leaders i think there has to be an honest discussion as to what is it that is required going forward for the organization now is it what are the capabilities that are required are these capabilities readily available in the market or do we need to bring in somebody and nurture them to have these things because this Uh, the current tendency of needing people immediately as an immediate joiner tomorrow and then getting them to run i understand the business pressures for that you know, i myself am a business leader i completely understand that but on the other hand that's probably the most short term way of building an organization and building capabilities which last long in an organization so that debate about immediacy versus nurture is something that i think hr Our teams have a, a duty towards their leadership and their organization, towards their own employees. I think current employees. I think the question is, how do you provide a balanced perspective as to what the organization needs versus what their own individual needs are? And I think that's been discussed by many of us in this in the last few minutes. And then, how do you provide an environment where that balance can be struck? That's one. three i think and the, and finally in the whole hunt for those ideal candidates or many times we all are looking for this uh, uh, five legged sheep right who can do everything from uh, uh, programming in java to probably uh, writing out uh, uh, very nice creative content and you want everything in between 
The question then is, how do you go and make sure that the candidates that we bring on board are people who actually fit the culture of the organization? Yeah, so that's that's an important one. I think uh, Pranay spoke about it, about culture and that culture fit. Because sitting inside an organization, HR is in a unique position to understand what defines a successful employee. What is the nature of that employee? Skills we can always figure out, right? To figure out skills, those things, you can we have a hundred tests to be done and things like that. You can do all those things. But understanding culture fit, I think it's a critical role for um, for HR uh, departments, HR teams, talent acquisition specialists to ensure that the candidates that they bring on to being interviewed by leaders have a culture fit in the organization. Yes, a cultural fit is uh, indeed very important and uh, probably one of those priority areas for a lot of uh, modern day HR uh, organizations. Like, HR functions of uh, modern day uh, organizations. Uh, Shivangi, what are your thoughts? So I think I completely agree with all of that they have said. But with that, uh, I love the point where, uh, you know, Sir said that it's about creating your own personal brand within the organization. That fact uh, is very important. And I think that's where the companies are focusing a lot. Um, in past uh, one year, I have seen uh, the most, you know, the most about uh, employee engagement, organizing activities, doing something, employee experience, learning and development per se. Everything has increased drastically with an intent to ensure that there's something that can be felt within employees. See, we all have got different reasons to conduct such things. One, because we have got a lot of spare budget in our hand. And second is that, do we really want to see the change? And I've seen not just small size companies, even the big companies, they all have been focusing on one good thing and that has changed. Unlike earlier times, feedback now is considered to be a great way of understanding your people because now people are not that, you know, submissive or introvert, I would say. Now the era is about being extrovert. So everybody is so vocal about their needs. If something is not good, they are really on phase. And I'm not just talking about very senior resources. I'm talking about freshers. So they are very carefully, uh, you know, understanding what they expect from the organization and how organizations are doing critical changes, bringing those experiences for them. I think that is the best part that I feel that HR as a profession is not just about hiring and recruitment, but it's, it's beyond that now. And people can feel that. That's important. So... So I think that's that's the change that's happening. And uh, and everybody is trying to not just be a part of such activities, but they're also respecting the efforts. They are being a part. So I always say this, uh, that, you know, introvert and extrovert is not really, it's not really a nature or a personality type. It's the mindset. And it's the era of being an extrovert. And that's where we celebrate it. So yeah, the next gens are like killing it. They are nailing it. I love that phrase, era of the extrovert employee. I think that's 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 wonderful, actually. Uh, you gave me an idea you... for my LinkedIn post today. I was wondering what to write. Now <laughs> I have one. I will use that as well. <laughs> okay. uh, so my, my view is, uh, you know, that the famous quote, be the change that you want to see, right? So I think the HR themselves have to be extremely aligned in terms of what's happening in the organization, what is the purpose of the organization. Yeah. And then they themselves need to be fully loaded because uh, we interact with multiple HRs. I think probably they are just too engrossed in hiring, recruiting, doing events for the employees, etc. So they're so engrossed in their day-to-day -day activities. I think probably they themselves forget the purpose of the organization at times. And, and then getting themselves fully loaded in terms of what kind of team needs, needs to be built in, what kind of culture that we want to build in, what things to drive, et cetera. And then um, getting themselves super skilled across the tech that the organization that needs, the tech that they, they themselves need to need and build the brand and things that we, we probably all of us discussed, right? That how do we build that brand inside? So HR role itself has has transformed drastically. That they're, they're no more just HRs; they're more like an equal partner in the organization. Uh, frankly, 
because with the more effort in in talking about engagement hiring and the kind of culture that we want to build they really play a very pivotal role at the end of the day um because finding talent keeping them motivated it's 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 very tough right so i think first of all they themselves need to load themselves with the right uh, tech and non tech and soft skill capability i think that's the first step i think to build a good organization and then uh, the other things would be you know they really need to embrace the purpose of the employees that they are getting into right uh, how do they can you know connect people within the organization be it employee be it the management be it the senior management be it the customer as well so they really have to play the customer service role as well uh, pretty well uh, you know customer success and customer service role pretty well because that's the uh, that's one thing that connects everybody and then purpose the the autonomy the the challenge challenging work culture inclusive work culture fostering learning um you know performance management all of things will come together you know uh, things that we talk about so uh, and then comes the people part where they really need to be again fully loaded in terms of how do they help their team members to be able to solve for their life and the work very easily so that you know eventually whenever situation they come across that hey somebody is disengaged or somebody is not being productive somebody is not happy they can quickly act upon and and make those um, you know decisions or make those act- actions pretty fast so they 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 also have to be extremely agile when it comes to um, you know building a non disengaged but a very engaged organization right so which which is also modern in nature because again we keep telling hearing about millennial gen z but we have to remember still the 18 to 90% of the work cul- workforce is still the millennial or the old ones right so you cannot just completely negate that workforce and say that hey we are just focusing on this segment but we cannot ignore that so i think those are the things that they need to balance it out well and uh, in that process they also as shivangi mentioned that uh, they really need to be ready with what's coming in future because any organization they need, need not plan for today but let's say for next 5 years and and the future is is what what we just heard so we have to plan for future and we have to accordingly manage it better so that's that's i would i would say yeah yeah thank you for summarizing all these important points that we've talked about in the last question uh, we also have this great comment from uh, pankaj piparia well said vidya sagar purpose is a critical and new driver of ex one needs a holistic framework to assess ex in a certain employee and organization drivers impacting it and he said that as i see the new rrr to retain employees is respect recognition reward that equals uh, retention so that's a great comment we've gotten from our uh, from our audience uh, next i would want to move to the best strategies aspect of it like from your experience uh, this is like for everyone what have been some of the best strategies that you've implemented in your organization that have helped increase employee engagement who would want to go first <laughs> shivangi let's start with you so i never work out of one place so we always ensure that we have a day out we we work out of a cafe and we believe in having uh, you know an environment that gives them the liberty to not just feel that we are into a 9 to 5 job so our timings really aren't fixed i focus on the work that we expect from them during one man day so that is one practice that i ensure because we all work hybrid and most of the time as a person as an you know as an employer i'm always uh, on site so i don't micromanage things at all so i always try to be as open as what they bring on to the table and then i probably think over it so our working hours are very very flexible uh, that's one and the second thing that i always tell them is that in case if your job is uh, you know not very fixed and it's it's not giving you a lot of job security in your mind why don't you probably go and build your personal brand because that's where we come to have I'm not able to hear uh, Shivangi. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, I think uh, there's been some uh, connectivity issue 
at Shivangi's. Some end. glitch, right? Even I lost yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Is it better? Yep. Yep. Is it better? Great. So that is that is. Uh, these are some of my practices that I use. I never, I never feel uh, like having this culture. Maybe because we are not very big. I'm sure once we grow in numbers, we would have to have a lot of systems in place. But that's how I work, and uh, I hope I continue to work that same way because I always dreaded a full time job in my life. These were my clear words to my parents that I would not do full time job no matter I, I don't earn, earn money. That's okay, but joining a full time job has always been very. Scareful for me as a person because my first experience was like worst, but somehow when I joined Rackspace, things changed and I learned so much. And I always appreciate that company for the culture, the people, and everything that I've learned. It's a US based company, so that's where I understood. And now I, I mean, I hop onto like twenty five companies in a week, one office to another, another to another. So I think that I have tasted almost every water that is there in the market now. <laughs> So it's time for me to build something different, and that's what we are trying to do. Wonderful, uh, Vidya Sagar ji. What do you think about what, in your experience, have been the best strategies to increase employee engagement? Yeah. So uh, let me go back to uh, maybe some time ago before my current role, right? So when I was actually uh, in in an industry where there was manufacturing. Yeah. So then, if you again, like, like I, I always try to put it. I mean, to to get the whole ecosystem into play when we speak about these topics, because I'm sure amongst our audience, we have people not just from the IT and uh, the software side of the house, but also from industry and manufacturing and things like that. If you if you swing to that other extreme, there are things around safety, having adequate safety measures in the manufacturing plant, having the right ergonomics. Uh, for employees who are working on repetitive physical jobs every day, having a, an environment where they can comfortably perform, now, these are these are some of the basic things that are required to ensure that people can come and perform those uh, repetitive tasks to ensure that productivity is high. So, if you swing all the way from that extreme, where some of the the engagement needs are pretty basic, yeah, and then if you compare those pretty basic requirements. And you compare what we provide in many organizations in India versus what are provided in many of these manufacturing industries in the Western world. There's a huge delta still. Then how do you methodically progress towards establishing a kind kind of a a, a common um, level of acceptance for these things? So that's that's on one extreme of the thing. On the other extreme, where I think you talk about um, where people do cognitive kind of work and not physical kind of work, I think it's about indeed creating an environment where you manage the stress levels of employees. I think that's an important one. How do you ensure that there's a space where they feel safe, they feel secure, they feel recognized, and they feel rewarded for delivering meaningful work? And I think striking that balance is probably one of the best strategies to uh, drive employee engagement up and get them to either perform at their peak in physical activities like manufacturing, or perform at their peak in mental activities like, for example, uh, coding in an organization. So I think you always have to think of these things as creating the right environment for people to per perform. Now that's, that's how I see it. Thank you, Mr. Sandeji, for always uh, providing us with a lot of with with a, with a very balanced viewpoint uh, on things. Again, uh, that is a, an important balance to to at least aim to strike for for uh, for all uh, organizations. I believe, uh, Vicky, what do you feel have been the best strategies that your organization has implemented uh, that have helped so, increase engagement? Yeah, uh, so I I would like to say that one of the most important. Uh, you know, a strategy or value system that we had, which actually led to a lot of you know uh, uh, solutions. You know, which which we which we are talking about uh, was uh, effective and continuous communication, internal communication. So I, I I'll give you an example. We have an open door policy. You want to talk you know directly to anyone in the organization, be it HR, be it the co-founder, be it the you know founder, be it the CEO. It's a completely open door policy. You can come and you know. Uh, uh, 
express your uh, grievance put forward an idea whatever and all of this has actually resulted in certain you know uh, practices that have actually you know uh, got created by themselves we 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 never planned and like for example collaborative learning this was an idea which just uh, you know uh, came we we were having an issue with uh, you know uh, ensuring uh, doing regular trainings with employees uh, getting trainers onto the board etc etc then one day you know uh, one of our senior uh, you know uh, developers came and said okay why are we actually you know uh, going outside and getting trainers we'll just train our team ourselves we we have so much you know uh, of people who could probably talk on uh, talk on financial management talk on you know uh, uh, recent ai stuff and so on so so that's what i would i, I would term as collaborative learning they, they they started doing these sessions themselves it was not initiated by hr it was not initiated by you know the management it, they, they started doing these sessions every and now it has become a religion uh, uh, you know a ritual i would say every saturday ye to hota hi hai company mein you know uh, come what may so uh, i would say uh, continuous and effective communication has led to you know uh, 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 solving a lot of uh, problems, so I would term this as a very good strategy that we adopted. And of course, you know, uh, since we we being a tech company, we had implemented a collaboration and intranet tool uh, ourselves. We actually built it ourselves and then started selling it to our customers also. That also helped us a lot in you know uh, uh, effective communication and engagement with the remotest of the employees. Currently, we have approximately more than sixty percent of the people who are working out of you know out outside Mumbai, you know. Uh, Uh, from indore from lucknow from hyderabad etc and they are all equally engaged i would say because of the tools that are you know uh, that are put in place so yeah this is what i would say okay using the right you uh, know tool and having a very good uh, effective and continuous communication strategy was one of the initiatives that helped us a lot great insights vicky thank you so much uh, from me over to you what do you think have been the best strategies uh, implemented in your organization to increase uh, engagement um i think from the engagement perspective i think communication does play i think the most important uh, uh, tool i would say for an hr to make sure that they know first of all what people are feeling thinking about it what they are looking for as well as also um, you know passing on what the team seniors management or you know customers what they are thinking about right and how to deal with how to deal with those situations pretty well so i think alignment of the organization purpose and what people are thinking i think that communication only can solve right and communication and and something which is very direct in nature right so i think these open doors policies anytime anybody can ping and chat about it call Uh, if not so they are not just a few slots they can ping fix up time and and they can share their problems etc i think that's the best thing the second thing is i think making sure that they are uh, they have the right basic safety nets in place uh, you know which which we just heard right that uh, if they need financial help there are certain tools available they need uh, physical mental health etc family help something that is needed the tools are available that the right rewards and recognition sort of a thing that is there with them that hey everything good you do you are rewarded everything that you do well which is outside you are well recognized i think so across the things there are small small things that you need to keep doing uh, to make sure that they are safe secure well connected etc i think those are the things that does play a big role and eventually i think you and and eventually if somebody wants to still leave i think wish them well i think rather than keep uh, you know pushing them or keep uh, you know uh, you know don't ruin the relationship at the end of the day right so so that's the most important thing right um, so uh, there there could be a variety uh, in or there could be a disagreement or there could be a different purpose people may have because different lifetime also calls for different purpose uh, you know depending on the life stage that people are in so i think never get too attached but also make sure that you're doing enough uh, that at least they respect for what you do and what they do i think that mutual respect communication i think those are the two things that hr team members organizations can drive to the max i think rest i think um, are 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 good fillers 
Thank you, uh, Prame, for those insights. And I do feel we have a great rhythm going uh, with the discussion, and we could go on. But we do have some audience questions that I'd like to uh, uh, open to everyone. Uh, one of the questions that's come across is, uh, what do you think will be the impact of rising automation on EX and uh, employee engagement? So who wants to take that? I'll, I'll take this, maybe. I think the you know, again anything uh, new that or, or anything that happens right it has pros cons etc right so uh, but but this I think is something that there are more cons than <laughs> sorry more pros than cons I would say I think the automation as I uh, I think a few minutes ago as I mentioned that uh, you know HRs also need the right tools they also need to be fully loaded so they also need good HRMS system good communication systems. Um, good system so that they can uh, check the pulse in terms of what's happening in the system organization etc without even being with people with being being with people etc so i think that is important and i think the tools related to uh, something that will help them are extremely important so as simple as that you know we have observed that uh, people who are using our tools pretty effectively they are they're very engaged um, we have our employee benefits tool people are using it and 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 that engage in that tool data points itself tell us that how people are engaged how much they check out in terms of what's happening what's new coming in etc they are also excited about um, what hr is doing etc so those kind of tools are extremely important um, and 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 the impact is huge for for sure um, because um, we, we were talking to a couple of organizations that they have pretty good tools as well, but they were uh, tools as in the policies, um, it, you know, policies and the, they had very fantastic leave policy. They had a fantastic uh, financial packages, etc., health insurance, but people were not aware about what's, you know, how to avail them, how to use them, what happens when they avail it, etc. So I think those tools become super important to communicate the end-to-end -end things in, this, in, in black and white, for example, so that nobody gets confused. And also the language aspect, yeah. Thank you, Prame. Another question that's come across is, uh, what aspect of your company culture are you most proud of? Uh, Vidya Sagarji, would you like to take this? Yeah, sure. I think the ability for um i think vicky mentioned an open door policy right so to me at least the way i see it and the way we operate at edeco india is to ensure that there is very little um, barriers or thresholds for an employee does not matter who it is uh, to easily reach out to anybody and have a, an honest communication about things that are going on uh, and this c continues to prove to be a challenge right so even though many companies have um, open door policies and you consistently encourage these things, there are still barriers of middle management. There are still barriers of uh, first time people leaders who, who who feel nervous about the ability of their reports being able to have a direct conversation with somebody at the top of the organization. So the, that ability to balance and then identify those barriers and then consistently work to reduce them and encourage the direct communication, I think is something that I'm proud of. And that's something that we all should consistently encourage. And I think that's something that, uh, yeah, that, that I'm pretty proud of and uh, uh, still work to do uh, as always. But uh, as a starting point, I think that's something that I'm very proud of. Thank you so much, uh, Vidya Sagarji, for that. Uh, we do have a couple of more questions, even though we're running, almost running out of time. Uh, we do, let's get to one very quickly. Someone's asked us, how to handle the unnoticed stress and turn it into, uh, you know, productive, uh, actionable insights, <laughs> so as to speak. So how, who wants to talk about, uh, you know, handling stress? Maybe Shivangi would be the right person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I never say uh, that you have to uh, probably handle stress. I'm like, it's good to have it. If you don't have it, what will motivate you in life? It's just that we need to get a better word to uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, maybe a better synonym for the word stress that can train our brain that it's not really a, that that's not really a matter of stress, but part of life. 
well to answer the question how do we handle stress is first to understand what is stressing you out so the most of the situation when i get it's i think we have some tech issues uh, at shivangi's end maybe maybe, uh, maybe okay. let me pick it up then on behalf yeah, sure. sorry She's back. She's back. Okay. So I'll continue, and then Vidya Sagarji, you can take it forward. So uh, I always try to go back and do like a root cause analysis. But before I do any of those things, I just the moment I understand that there's something triggering within me, I try to find a better hobby, a better activity to do, rather than just stressing onto that uh, you know that thing as of that point. I don't do that. I'm like I take some time off. i try to uh, change my work settings my environment i go out i read i listen to music i probably scroll instagram to just get out of that state because while you are in that state of stress you'll not be able to make a good decision at all so you at least have to get out of it and then sit back and see what bothered you so how you handle stress is i always take stress as a great place for me to learn a great opportunity for me to understand how do i need to get better how do i need to handle my probably mood swings or my reactions so that's better just get out of that situation change your work settings take change your environment and then once you feel relaxed you feel okay then go do the root cause analysis ask a couple of questions okay what made me get so stressed was it my own cause or somebody else's so just try to sit with yourself and uh, self talk is very very important and that's very important you could do while you are driving back to home that's how i do it so yeah thank you thank you shivangi like billy jean king said pressure is a privilege so i think we need to change uh, how we view stress uh, perhaps to handle it better anyone else wants to add to it because we'll wrap up the session after this thing with this agar ji wanted to Yes, please. Then maybe I'll just put. Maybe just to add one comment on that. To me, I think make it discussable. It's it's often times a to topic which is uh, treated as uh, a non discussable discussable in organizations. Make it okay to be discussed, and set examples with leadership talking about how they deal with it. And I think being vulnerable and discussing these topics makes it a. a a topic which more and more employees will feel comfortable to discuss because once you discuss it you can have uh, ways of addressing it so maybe i'll also just like to add uh, on to what i i agree with what you know how shivangi even kind of i also do the same thing uh, when out of stress uh, i personally also uh, do it uh, do something which i am very good at or you know i like doing maybe maybe writing a code maybe you know going out with friends and so on so uh, that is something you know uh, you, you could do and uh, one more thing i would say is uh, finally stress and you know tension is contagious so the uh, one of the best thing you can do is uh, you know uh, uh, just just isolate yourself so that you do not pass on that you know uh, to uh, others and of course uh, after uh, after some point of time obviously you will be you know back to uh, business in in a very nice and uh, you know uh, good mindset all, all all great points yep sorry this addition you were saying something No, I was just saying thank you all for this session. I think it was a very insightful session. I would also like to uh, say a, a big thank you to everyone uh, for joining us, to our audience as well, and to all our panelists, Vidya Sagar ji, uh, Vicky, Pramay, and Shivangi. Thank you so much. I feel like it's been a very insightful discussion. This could have gone on, which is always yeah. a great sign. I feel. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we would like to thank our partner for the session, Batik. Uh, and last but not the least, a big thank you to all our attendees. um and please uh, don't forget to provide your feedback in the survey link in the chat section because your input matters have a great day everyone thank you so much for joining us thank you thank you everyone. have a great day bye